we're gonna be looking at things in small detail. But what you do is kind of get the big picture. We just sort of just look around, get a feel of the landscape, <clears throat> excuse me, the landscape around you. By landscape, I mean the, the topography, the contours. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna be heading in just a few minutes, we're gonna be um, botanically almost going from the Piedmont to the mountains. Dad, if I walk by something and you wanna know what it is, certainly ask me and I'll, I'll, I'll certainly be more than willing to stop and talk about it. And, and certainly flowering dogwood is, is, is a beautiful specimen of a tree. Um, if, if you're into Latin nomenclature, you may, like I, mourn the loss of its genus. It's no longer Cornus Floridia. There's a whole new genus for the dogwood. No. We're not all crowded around it, and then I'll, then I'll tell you about it. But come on down this way. The folks in the back, we're going to make sure everybody gets a chance just to walk by. And uh, at least get to a point in which you, if you haven't seen it, get to the point in which you can. Um, what, what did you, what did you notice about the plant? Well, it's a stalk. Flower. The, the plant, the flower. What did you notice? It's growing on a steep slope. Oh, it's growing on a slope. In the shade. Yeah, yeah. Acid yeah. Get, get real simple with it. What color is it? White. White. It's white. What shape is the leaf? It's like a maple. Okay, so it's it's the, the leaf on it somewhat sort of maple-ish like comes to a point. Um, it, it's almost somewhat uh, kind of heart-shaped. That makes it chordate in terms of botanical terms. That makes this Tiarella cordifolia leaf that is chordate or heart-shaped. Tiarella comes from the fact if you looked at one of these little white flowers, it looks like the spires on a tiara. <laughs> Usually it's growing close to streams, and when you look in streams and you see that foaming water associated with these fast moving or uh, streams that are losing some elevation, it looks like foam, right? So a common name for this is foam flower. Foam flower. We'll certainly see more foam flower along the way today, okay? Um, but welcome to the mountains, North Carolina. If you look around, you'll start to notice we've got this large a dark green specimen on the hillside, that's rhododendron maximum. In English, that would be the rose tree, is what rhododendron means. Um, also, you might notice that some of these trees in the understory look like they're kind of dying back. They are. You'll see some really healthy specimens later on. Um, but that's eastern hemlock. And <coughs> eastern hemlock, you may or may not be aware of the story of the, what's happening to those with the hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, non-native insect, which is, 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 is killing a huge percentage of our, our hemlock trees. Um, beautiful, beautiful coloration in there. Um, someone mentioned the name of it already? Wild iris. Yep, wild iris. Dwarf crested iris. This is, for you scientific uh, name junkies, this is iris cristata. The, the other species we have is not as common and the petals will be more rounded on the on the end where these come to a more acute or more to a point um, but the crested iris is uh, iris cristata we know it's an iris because it's got those leaves all in one plane if you would versus coming off in multiples we've got all on the same plane um, and if we looked at it closely we'd see it's got parallel veins you got parallel veins and all your leaves in one plane whether it's in bloom or not you got yourself an iris right? oh. One of the ways of picking them out. This little wildflower is really hard to see. I'm going to have to find it again. Um, from the hillside. Oh, oh. You yeah. see it? It's, a little it's going to have a little topic. yellow yeah. flower hanging yeah. down yeah. underneath. Yeah. This is going to have to be kindergarten style again, but if you look at it, it's got this beautiful little flower oh, hanging yeah. down like the uvula in the back of your throat there. Yeah. So hence it's uvularia. And in this case, because it has no uh, petiole on the leaf, it's a sessile leaf. And this is sessile leaf bellwort. There's another one that looks very similar to it. However, one of the differences is 
this one has a fuzzy or hairy stem letting us know that it's um, cecifolia or bellwort. The other green one you're seeing in here, uh, or should I say yellow one, um, is wild strawberry. Yeah. This is wild star strawberry. Star yep. Yeah. Yellow star grass, green and gold. Yeah. Um, if when you look at it originally, you look at it and you go, wow, that's, that's, that's beautiful. It's got these 10 white petals. But if you look at it closely, it only has five petals. They're just deeply cut to make it appear that they are 10 petal. They're really only five petal that are deeply cut, if you would. Because of its overall star-like pattern, this is Stellaria, is the genus, also known as giant chickweed. Now, you may know the chickweed that's non-native and has a tiny flower and grows in your lawn, and some people don't like them. Uh, but that little plant we saw up there is the same thing, Stellaria. Scientific name is just really fun to say. You should try it. Lakothwee Fontanciana. Think about Lake Fontana. So Lakothwee Fontanciana. It's just fun to say. Um, it, if that flower looks similar to something you've seen before, it should. It should look like a blueberry, right? Because it's in the Ericaceae family. Same family as sourwood, rhododendrons, azaleas, all in the same family. Um, repeated multiple times through here. This plant grows in huge colonies. It's a characteristic of it. Another characteristic of it is, if you notice, this one only has one leaf. This one has two. If you're going to go look for the flower or the apple in the month of May or earlier here, you look on the plants that have two leaves. Mm -hmm. That's where the bud, the flower, and yes, the apple of the May apple will be. So this is May apple, and to some botanist, it looks sort of like a foot. <laughs> okay, um, that's why it's podophyllum. It's a scientific name. For it. Really neat plant, though. May apple. Wild plum trail. Where are the wild plums? Uh, <laughs> right there. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. oh, all right. Yeah, I've seen those on some. Yeah, and wild plum's going to bloom after service berry. So service berry will bloom early, and then dogwoods will start coming in, and usually then you'll get that overlap of, of wild plum. Sometimes they'll come in before the dogwoods, but not usually. Thank you. For Thank, you so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You have no idea how big the smile. <laughs> I can see yeah. your eyes. Oh, without it. Eyes yeah. now. <laughs> and thank you, as I always feel this very heartfelt. You, you gave me something I can't give you back. And that's your time. So thank you. <laughs>